Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I'm going to show you how to create this simple nail ring with the notch on the top for today's Rhino 3D tutorial. Are you ready? Let's get started. If it is a regular structure, the head is rounded and then you make cutting inside of the ring shank. So we need to watch out. We don't let that happen. So I creating into the oval a little bit illusion on it. Other than that, everything else we can design flat and flow it back. So that's starting from the scratch. We're going to go to our front view to create our ring size. But this time, instead of using a circle, we need to create some sort of the spiral looking things. So right here, the helix. We're going to starting axis, type it zero here and coming into the top view to see how wide you want this spiral to be. So it's going to be about five millimeter wide. And I want to set the turn for 1.2, right? The radius starting point, uh, I'm going to type it eight. So that will set it up for diameter for eight. And I can moving around to see where the start and end is going to be. So you're going to get something like this. Next step, we need to know how long is this piece. So I'm going to check on it and it says it's 62.981. Just making a copy right there. We're going to design flat. Uh, you can directly pipe it if you want, but I wanted to have a lot more control. So I want to go into the poly line and start with the line with the exact the same number for the length here. All right. And you can doing something maybe not smooth. You want a hammer looking. So when you design flat, it's just much easier. And then next one you're going to do is you can decide it like how wide you want it to be. I want it to be about two to three millimeter, right? And then so I want to have a profile there. Now I want to rebuild this curve to be degree three and maybe point. We want to do seven here. All right, and let's go ahead to turn on the control point. I do want it to have them coming down a little bit like this and maybe have this one move it to the left. So the nail ring that I'm going to have is going to coming over here and taper it down, something like that. If you feel like this is too pointed and it's not going to be comfortable, we can, you know, make it something like this. Oh, moving this point to the left. All right. So once you like the shape, go ahead to mirror to the other side. And to round this off, we can just go ahead to blend it in between here and here and click OK. All right. And you can join them if you want to. But the key is because we want to sweep. So we actually let me make them a little bit shorter first. So go inside of that boundary and I'm going to have this one be split by this middle line here. All right. So then I got two curve. Okay. Now we have it. It looks like it's a little bit too thick, but that's okay. I want to make a men's ring here. And then we are going to create in the profile. I'm going to use the circle diameter command and make sure vertical is click. And we're going to go from here to here. So in our perspective, you can see I have a circle fit it nicely over there. All right. And the next things we are going to creating the surface. So let's go ahead to use the surface for sweep two. You got rail one, you got rail two, you got cross section here, and then we'll get this, right? Double make sure if this is too thick, is the shape that you like, or you want to beat it up this nail, it's up to you. I do want it to cap it so they will be solid. All right. And then you can bring some sphere to punch it, you know, to, to make it a little bit rougher. But that's not the point. Uh, I just want to show you how to flow this one. All right. The second things I would like to do is making those notch there. One thing I can do to find out what is going to fit better is I'm going to uh, come to the curve and then a uh, curve from the object. And then you have this extract ISO curve. Then I'm going to just extract one. If the direction is not what you like, just go ahead to toggle it. All right. For this curve right here, we are going to split with the point. Let's go ahead to do something like that. They don't have to be equal. 
size on, on both sides. It just need to be um, some sort of a curve there. All right. So now you can see this curve right there. If we just go ahead to pipe this, I'm going to pipe it to show you what you shouldn't do. Or maybe you, you like that. That's fine. It's about this size and then we'll see something like this, right? And then the result is it will hopping on it nicely. But when you pull in difference, let's go ahead to do the pull in difference. This one out of this one, this notch doesn't look quite good. It doesn't look like notch. It look like recess that like this big area in there. Uh, I do not like if you take a look on the render view, you're going to see this. This is not a notch. It is actually a cut, right? So what I like to do before we pipe it, I actually going to pick up this one and make them a little bit wider. So the end is not going to touch, right? And then we are going to pipe in that one one more time. As long as you are not touching this, the surface there, it should be fine. And I also wanted to pull in difference, right? And to see if that, that look more like a notch. Right. So once we like it, we can linear array. Or if you don't want it to be like a so uniform, you can just copy and paste. Right. So I'm going to have something like this. So five of them right there. And we are going to pull in difference. This one out of this one. Now you can make them a little bit nicer on the rendering by using the fitted. And we want to fit it something really small. Let's give it a try for point three. You see it look much nicer on the rendering there. The next step we are going to do is creating a head. So let's go ahead to use a cylinder and snapping into here. And for whatever thickness, I snapping into the wrong side, but that's okay. Let me go ahead to bring it up here and maybe make just a little bit bigger. Not too big, just a little bit. All right. So with this shape, oh, it is a little bit too big there with this shape I also wanted to fit it as well so let's go ahead to fit it this way this way and like that all right and then we need to move this one down there okay now I want to show you two things here if you I'm not bowling yet I'm going to just temporarily hold it by a uh, group them all right and we also have the original curve right there. Few things I wanted to mention. This curve is represent this guy. So if you have this curve right in the middle, once you flow back, we will cut it inside of a ring shank. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead to use the flow along curve. And we're going to pick up the object. We're going to pick up the curve. We pick up this curve. And then you realize your ring shank it's actually right there. So half of your ring is cutting inside your ring shank and it will get smaller on the ring size. So that's not what we want. So what we wanted to do is actually moving this curve, moving this middle one down all the way to the bottom, right? So that way it will align with your ring shank correctly. We want to align with this guy right here. All right, so that will be your ring shank. Now you also see this is gonna be hanging inside of it, right? But not only like that, you see once you flow back, it's kind of uh, deformed the shape because inside more close to the center will be squished down, right? So the best way that I will suggest is not, it's not flowing this guy because I don't like that deform, right? So I'm going to unlock. So I'm also going to pick up that and that again, make sure it's aligned to the bottom. And then we are going to flow it back. So let's go ahead to use the flow command, pick up this one, this, this surface right here. And we're going to pick up the curve that we have there on the bottom. And coming into the perspective, I'm going to pick it right there. All right. So if everything look nice to you and it's not cutting into the ring shank and that is the shape you like, I actually will manually to bring this one here and tilt it into the angle and that will fit in there, right? And that way you don't get deformed because this is a big part of the design. If you deform it, it's really 
you know, easy to tell. And sometimes when you have this is cutting inside of a ring shank, it doesn't look too good. So you can actually 1D scale it into more of an oval shape, like scale it down. So then you can bring this up. It's up to you. And then you can trim the extra whatever across the ring shank at all point and kind of moving around. So that will be the nail ring for today's demonstration. If you like the way I model, I have a lot more to show you on my online class for Jewelry CAD Masterclass. In this class, I'm going to show you everything from the beginning. And I also offer a private group coaching within this class. So you can ask me the question in the group that's going to help you to learn much faster. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.